So today, we take a little bit of a different tack because we come from the law and we look at this in a very succinct way. These things have to all match up when it comes to the law. There has to be some sort of line through your facts to be able to, to find something on the table. And in that, the foundations of our country uh, are defined as well. So we look at some of these definitions as the will of our fathers, the will of our fathers. So I'm just going to read a couple of passages. So if you want to walk around and go and make a cup of coffee and do whatever while you listen, I'm just going to read something from the Bible and we'll come back at the end. Jeremiah 23, authorised King James Version. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord that I will rise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And in his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Mine heart within me is broken, because of the prophets, all my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. I am like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them. Even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evil doers that none doeth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. 
from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, Ye shall have peace, and they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word, and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even as a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he hath executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said, that prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophecy lies? Yeah, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name, by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbour, as their fathers have forgotten my name, for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord? and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbour. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. Thus shall ye say every one to his neighbour, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God and the Lord of hosts our God. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? What hath the Lord spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord 
because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city that I gave you, and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence, and I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. So we can see the dishonour being spoken about when talking about a, a state and a line of authority to hold rule of law. So this could somewhat be directed at those that believed they were working for the country when in fact they joined an administration. Now I will go into the military side of this in a separate video given that we are directing this at the government which would then lead to the parliament which would then involve the House of Representatives and the Senate. Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Is the question here. So we carry on with a passage from Romans 12. Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, and he that teacheth on teaching, and he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honour preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, 
feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So, we talked about an executive branch of government, the executive branch in the Constitution. We talked about a line of authority in your ANZAC, your ancestry, a lineage that gives you a birthright, act of settlement. So we, we look at a few things here and we can see the disgrace and dishonour that is taking place in the way that these people manage your estate. They treat you like wards to the constitution instead of recognizing what gives authority through the blessing of almighty God into that very constitution in the very first place. And they count on this to hold their power in that government by keeping you dumb you are unaware of the fact that administrators have moved into father's house, the nanny in the estate, the nanny government, the one that infantilizes you and treats you like children instead of the grown-ups that you are. And it's all because they believe this because they fed you their reserve bank currency. You're incapable of managing your own affairs and are therefore dependent on the reserve to manage them on your behalf. And the state moves in as guardian to your affairs, dishonouring God by treating you as a ward of the state where men decide your future instead of the blessing of Almighty God. In the lineage of your forefathers. So we touched on some very serious things at law that anchor certain things in an estate that therefore define a great seal at which an executive branch would seal its documents. This brings us back to a letters patent 1984 and a letters patent 2008 bringing some sort of fracture in Letters Patent 1900 and the lineage that is inside the Governor-General's office. Isn't that right, Bill Shorten? As we pointed out very, very clearly, being in cahoots with something higher than the executive branch to control the people as wards of state and keep them in poverty in perpetuum is a war crime called slavery. Now, we touched on quite a few other actions by several parties to this executive branch of this constitution. And we start to look at the actual will of our fathers through the scripture and that blessing of Almighty God to define very clearly what is foreign, a foreign interest, an alien to the estate. So this is where they have a very clear legal, lawful, legal foundation that becomes a conundrum to them given that they can't deny those foundations given that they printed them on the money. The Reserve Bank currency indicating to everyone what they were doing in Queen Victoria's indissoluble, can't be dissolved because it's us the people. Can't be dissolved, that's why Elba attempted to go to a referendum to undermine the blessing of Almighty God in the very constitution itself. And this is an act of treason coming out of the Prime Minister's office and the Federal Executive Council, which Bill Shorten is in cahoots with when he calls you all that 
N word. We can start to add all these things together and we see that some very, very heinous and serious criminal offences have occurred that might include the M word, the, the ending of certain things in your livelihood word. Right? Serious criminal offences being perpetrated by the planning of a government. The planning of a government. Meaning that this would be some sort of gang-style criminal action, wouldn't it? Multiple players in a play called a conspiracy, they conspired against the people. They conspired and finally got caught out in how they conspired using their IMF and their RBA and their swaying of your minds to forget the foundations of God in your very own country. And this is where the panic button is about to be hit because they can't escape the administration that they play in when they broke the rules of that administration.